Welcome, Decatur Red Raider fans, to the Red Raider Preview Show, where we discuss all things Red Raider related. We'll recap the Austin High game, get Coach Ritter's take on this week's game against the Jasper High School Vikings. Our Red Raiders will be traveling deep into the heart of Walker County, Alabama, and we want to be prepared for our first region game. We will also ask a couple of mystery questions to keep the coach on his toes. Last week's mystery question will be hard to beat this week, but I'm sure the guys have something extra special up their sleeves. The loss last Friday night to Austin was rough. But as always, we're looking ahead and staying focused as we prepare for the Vikings. We'll be live this Friday night at 6.30 p.m. from Jasper High School Field. It should prove to be an exciting matchup. And never, ever forget that today is a great day to be a Red Raider. Now, on to the Red Raider preview show with John Brent and Coach Ritter. Welcome to the third installment of the Red Raider Preview Show with Coach John Ritter and John Gottlieb and Brent Collins. That's Coach Ritter. Right? <laughs> That's Coach Ritter. You'll see something else with Coach Ritter later in the show, so stay tuned. All right, we'd like to uh, thank our platinum sponsors for making this broadcast sp uh, happen. Evans and Harris PC, Gold Rush Tax, Fluid Engineering, Decatur Coca-Cola Modeling, Melissa and Jamie Finley, The Core Construction Group, United Community Bank, Early Services, Decatur Utilities, David Peak, Guy's Pharmacy, John Pilot with Eagle Creek, Culver's, and Dr. Lou Sample. All right, so I'm gonna do our Reuters Ruminations. And if I can get through this question without him punching me in the face, I'll be doing good. If he didn't punch you in the face after your last question last week, okay, here we go. Be good. Here we go, Coach Ritter. What character traits do you value most in your players, and how do you instill these values throughout the season? And one might be like going in when you're supposed to, but go ahead. Yeah, I use in character traits that you value most in your player. You know, I think the thing that we preach the most is accountability. Uh, you know, being accountable for your actions, being accountable for your job, uh, and that that is very broad, but it's very specific at the same time. You know, when you screw up, own it. You know, when you're coached to do something, own it. When you have a job to do, whatever that job is, you know, and, and that's bigger than football. That goes into life in general. Be accountable for your actions, whether they're good, whether they're bad, you know, whatever, whatever they are. You know, accountability is a number one. Number two is resilient, you know, and things are going to go wrong in a game. Things are going to go wrong in your life. How do you respond? You know, a resilient person keeps on plugging, even though it, it's not easy, even though it's not fun uh, to, to get to a, a destination, to get to a, uh, a desired result, whatever that may be. Those are the two things that, that I think we preach the most in our program. All right. Where is Well, you know, last week uh, – Got to talk about it. Yeah, got to talk about it. We're going to do a recap. Um, but overall, last week you said you watched the film eight eight times, the Buckhorn game. But how many times you you watched this one? About, Inside, about the same? It, 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 it never got any prettier. It never got any prettier. But overall, uh, let's, any, let's, let's talk about the takeaways that you can give somebody. We talked about giving them tangible evidence of this is how you can get better. Can you talk about some of the things overall that you saw that you, you're you going to be able to instill in the guys this week? Yeah, you know, offensively, I, I was frustrated offensively because we weren't, and I think we talked about it, we were not controlling the things that we can control. And and I kind of hammered that home this morning. You know, you can't control genetics. The fact that they're bigger, faster, and stronger, you can't control that. But what you can control is lining up, no false starts and no delay of games. Those are all three things that we could have controlled that had no bearing on who lined up against us. Unfortunately, we let who lined up against us affect things that we can control. And, uh, you know, I've done a poor job as a, as a coach, and, and we've changed some things. You know, we, we tried offensively to kind of maximize our potential and formationally move people around based off you know, a certain set of rules. Well, we've scrapped that. We, we're going to have an X that lines up on the left. We've got a, line, a Y that lines up on the right. 
and our Z will be our mover, um, along with our H back. And, you know, moving forward, I, I don't know how to make it any simpler. You know, we're going to do some things um, I want for our kids to make it easier for them. And at the same time, they got to be accountable for their actions. You know, we're on a wristband. It tells you what to do. You know, screwing up red eight is, is a lack of focus. It, or it's just... I don't think we're defiant. I just think that we get in the moment and we just go haywire. Defensively, same thing. You know, we, we're going to simplify some of the things that we do and kind of scale back. And we want our kids to, A, get lined up and, B, play fast. And Coach Massey and I, and I have had a, a couple conversations about, you know, what we do is good. But if we're not good at it, it ain't good. So let's simplify. Let's be Let's be a little bit simpler on the back end. Let's get lined up. Let's be where we're supposed to be and then allow them to make plays. And then if genetics take over, well, we can't control that. So special teams, we talk, you know, early on they were kicking deep to Trey and maybe they, they found something different. Austin did with a little pooch kick in, uh, I believe, number 85. He he caught the first, ran into it, and then he started calling fair catch. Is that – is that something y'all have worked on in the past? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I thought, uh, you know, Jeremiah Davis did a great job. He took the first two and he felt comfortable running them, and he stuck it up in there. And, you know, we had real good field position uh, with those two kickoff returns. And the, the Quaylen, you know, with Quaylen and Simpson, and uh, I know we rotate Watkins back there and Greenwood, I probably wouldn't kick it deep either. Uh, you know, so they kind of started doing that, and I thought Jeremiah did an excellent job. You know, if he's ever – feels uncomfortable he's supposed to fair catch it because at the end of the day we just want the ball yeah i was real impressed i stuck it up in there i mean and probably played a lot and and he got in there and it, it, he was one of the guys that did do their job i know we struggled a little bit with the in hunting game this this week uh what do we do to just just work at that i mean uh just i know you went through a couple <laughs> snap the ball snap the ball you know get some ball get get rid of the ball it seemed like the 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 punter actually did a couple good the, – the latter part of the game got rid of a couple of fines that maybe could have been blocked. Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, here again, Bryson Taylor's never played, but he's got a really strong leg. He's, you know, when we when we all do our job up front, and it wasn't just the snap. Now, that's what everybody saw, but they were also running through it like crap through a goose. And, you know, that's something that we, we focus on special teams the first 15 minutes of every practice. You know, we have a specialty period where we're snapping, we're kicking, we're holding. Um, you know, we work kicking the kicking game on certain days. We work return on certain days. Uh, you know, and that, here again, just youth, you know, and I hate to keep talking about it, but it is what it is. We got guys in spots that are just inexperienced. And, you know, hopefully two weeks now of different looks. Buckhorn was more of a return-based team where Austin pinned their ears back and came and got it. Uh, you know, now we've seen it all, so let's adjust and let's do better and uh, let's not get them blocked. Injuries or general help of the team uh, and then how we're dealing with the heat and ultimately end up in with uh, some game balls. Yeah, you know, uh, Turner Wyman uh, goes for an MRI tomorrow. Uh, you know, probably not going to get good news on him. Uh, and that's a huge blow. Uh, you know, Turner's a place rover for us and does a, a really good job. Uh, you know, on the offensive line, hopefully we get battles back to – to create some number and, and we're you know attrition is going to be the thing that's really our downfall because we don't have a lot of depth uh you know the way we practice we try to create as much depth as we can but at the end of the day you got what you got and uh you know up front offensively I, i'm very concerned with with our numbers and you know do we have bodies yeah we've got bodies but you know i i don't want to put a, a kid in a position that he's not going to be successful in uh, you know, injuries obviously take its toll, and um, we just got to stay healthy, and we got to get some guys back, and, and hopefully Braden coming back. Uh, Ethan Smith goes uh, Wednesday for an MRI, you know, and kind of see what's going on with, with him. And, you know, that was two huge blows to the offensive monitor. Well, I don't know if you watch the broadcast or not. We've had 1,700 views, but the one of the highlights of John's night, he sang the, what do you call it, the river rat? We are the River Rats. We are the River Rats all. So that is a that is an old tradition that we're going to try to bring Brad. Brad. Let's sing it to him. Uh, after. <laughs> yeah, that's why you got all those views. Cause, I mean, that's yeah, right. That's right. Old Bam. Bam. Yeah, an old Bam guy. You're white, Mike. Watch. You let Chime in there with you. Good harmonies right there. 
<laughs> yes. Let's go to the Jazz for Viking. All right, Coach. So they're two and zero. Oh. They play Brookwood, which I've never. I guess you probably know where that is. Right outside Tuscaloosa. Forty-eight to seven, they beat them. They're Region Six. They're Six A, and then they played Sipsy Valley Bears last week. Beat them forty-eight to twenty-eight. They're a five A school. Last year, they were five A Region Five. They were one and nine. They were in the region with Ramsey, Fairfield, Winona, Hayden, Carver, John Carroll, and Pleasant Grove. So it was a different bunch last year. Uh, David Reeves. You know David? I did. I actually worked with David at Athens in 2005. Okay. Well, second year. And I did not know this, but past coaches in their history, Larry Blakeney. All the people know Coach Blakeney. Uh, he was a uh, coach at Auburn, then I think at Troy. Early 70s. And then Chris Yeager, the Mount Brook guy, was there for a couple of years back in the early 90s. 9-10, nine all-time record against Decatur. And I, the last game was in 2014. And they lost to Decatur 27-7 in the first round of the playoffs. But I want to talk about the two prior to that. One was in uh, the first round in 1995. They they beat Decatur 14 to three, which you had that you 1995. had 1995. You had to talk about that. 1995 is Brent's year. We were nine and one going into the, into the first round of the playoffs. And Adam Cox, I don't know if you remember Adam Cox, but he went on to play at Tuscaloosa. He wore this. Um, kind of uh, sunglass screen. I'm gonna mess y'all up. Oh, he had all black and black, and he had black leggings on. It messed us up, but it was a blowing windstorm. And uh, I hear a lot of excuses. We didn't give up a touchdown all year until that game, and we got beat 14 to three. But I think the other loss well, had uh, something to do with then. The other loss was in a semifinal game in November 25th, 1997. What did you do about that? Yours truly was on that field that night. We got beat double overtime, 28-27, Lenny Patrick. Oh, man, that brings back some bad memories. But but I will say this. I'm going to say this. Neither Brent nor I lost to Jasper. It was Ward Walker County. Walker County. We lost to Walker County. But we can I, even the record. But this is another thing that I noticed is that Russell has played – Jasper a good bit, so you probably don't know about Jasper you about that. Yeah, they were in our region uh, our first two years there. Brian Moore, who later came to Hartzell, uh, was the head coach. They were loaded. And, uh, you know, I think the first year we played them at Jasper, it was, uh, I think we were ranked third and they were ranked fifth. We scored on the first play of the game and we really made them mad. <laughs> and uh, I think they ended up beating us 42-14. to 14. And then the second year, they came in ranked number one in the state and, uh, you know, I, it was actually 35 to 7, I think. Uh, you know, and, and those two teams were loading it. You know, I've known David since 2005, and he's kind of fighting the same thing that we're fighting. Last year it was his first year. They're playing a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores. I think he even played a couple of eighth graders in, uh, in a brutal 5A region. Uh, you know, and so I, I think it, we do our part. It's going to be a, a great game. I think it's a game that we can. We can be successful, you know. It, we got to obviously hammer some things out. We got to get better in in some areas and, and be solid. But uh, you know, if we do our part and they do our part, their part, it should be a, a great first. We really do practice. offensive spread. Uh, you know, uh, Shane Smothers is offense coordinator, and his Lord, I guess it, about his seventh son for quarterback. And uh, you know, he's a typical Smothers quarterback that played it. Uh, we see it, Muscle Shoals. Muscle Shoals. And then Athens before that. And then Muscle Shoals at the end. And now he's got a kid at, at Jack Astor. Okay. And he's a good player, uh, number seven. And then they're going to play a bigger kid, number two, at quarterback. A lot of RPOs, a lot of quarterback runs with uh, with the Smothers kid, number seven. You know, and then defensively, they're 3-3 they're three, three stack. Uh, you know, David's been the defense coordinator at Southern Arkansas. He was the defense coordinator at UAB for the last probably seven to ten years. Uh, you know, and they're – they're very multiple. They do a lot of college s stuff, which, you know, hopefully we can we can take advantage of. I know that you're going to go over ground you just covered, but who's to the Raider Vic? Uh, offensively, we got to put drives together. We're killing our defense with three and outs. Uh, we, we obviously we got to score. I mean that's kind of given. But if we can just put some drives together and and, and make people defend the whole field, right? and that's where the you I think we struggled with. Uh, in the kicking game, it's be solid. You can't get hits blocked. 
You know, I think we've been really, really good in the return game. Uh, you know, that was ev evident by uh, well, the returns that we had against Austin, who was a really, really good old special team. And then defensively, we got to make guys snap it. You know, we the first drive of the game for Austin was 18 plays. You know, and that's a win. Even though they scored, it's 18 plays because a typical high school team is going to turn the ball over. They're going to have false starts. They're going to do a lot of things to screw themselves up. The more you make them snap it, it's winning. When they have three and four play drives, you're not really making that team work. And uh, you know what? We've got to we got to do a better job of getting off the field on third down. All right, so uh, let's transition into the mystery question. Let's see if you got a game. Got to go. The first, the diamond sponsors, J.W. McCook, a cool hold uh, inspection service, BCA general contractors, B&B Roofing, uh, Prodigy Services Inc., Decatur Morgan Hospital, Impact Sales and Service, Stovall Marks Insurance, VM uh, Nutrition, and J&M Science. Brett, you got the first two. Yeah, so. A couple things. I'm going to go off script a little bit, but here's the first clip. <laughs> so, um, favorite college coach and why? Uh, Rick. And it, it could be a current, could be past. Um, and in the spirit of college football that started Saturday, we didn't have to ask that question. Sorry. What in, do you incorporate any of whoever that is? Whoever that is into, have you read books? from old coaches that that inspire you or have led you to them the path you're on. Yeah, you know, uh, I love Tony Dungy's book. He, he's written two or three uh, that, that I really, really like. Uh, you know, it, him and Nick Saban are probably my two that I go to, uh, and they're, they couldn't be on polar opposite ends, of how they approach a week, how they approach a game, how they approach a program. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's the same results. And, uh, you know, obviously Nick Saban is probably the best to ever do it. Uh, and the way he hammered doing your job. And, you know, when you get guys at that level to do what they're supposed to do, you go on the runs that you're supposed to go on. And that's one thing that, that I've really modeled our program after since 2012. We may not be the most talented. It may not be on paper supposed to be, you know, uh, a dynamic team or a dominant team. But we put some really good products on the field because we've convinced these high school kids to do what they're supposed to do all the time. So we talked about emojis last week. Did you go on Snapchat trying to work on yours? Yeah. You didn't. Yeah, we, he, he, like he had no, no, but well, we did it. So we wanted to we wanted to break that out and, and show the the fan base what what your new emoji is going to look like. Oh, y'all got y'all got too much free time on your hands. All right, here we go. We might get your signature on. Hey, Tim. How about that? <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Let me see. Now, this is the more mature John Ritter. That's all. Is this all? You think your wife would like that? Can we get your signature on it? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and then, you know, in, in the spirit of the last, the last mystery question last week, I'm sure this has to do with me. We, we want to, we, we want it to. That is, uh, that's good. Is that, that's is that good. what it generated? Thank you. No, I think that means, and he's let's say it's me. Okay. It's <laughs> fine. Right. Y'all may get to sit. Do we owe that? That's awful. You got anything to say to that? <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all got to go ahead and go oh, yeah. so I can get through with my mystery it's, question. It's, it's, All right, put that up. Oh, put that. Okay, <laughs> two, two, final two questions. I should be pretty. Serious? Serious. So I'm gonna leave them right there. That's all. This is either either playing career or coaching career. Your most heartbreaking loss and your most tubular win. That's uh. You need to think about that and come back next week. That's tough. How'd you go to do some heads up on that? Well, you told me you didn't like heads. You didn't like the the most heartbreaking loss is gonna have to be 2000 and. 12 at Woodland. Woodland? I was the head coach at Red Bay. We got the ball with eight minutes to go. We went on an 18-play drive, started our own 10, and we got down to the three and stalled out, and we missed a field goal as time expired to tie the game. What, what, what year was this? 2012. Okay. You know, 
Coach Adcock's brother who lives in, in Wood Drill. Very strange with the head. Yeah, well, I wonder if it, I wonder if John, did, John West Adcock was seen. Very possible. But that was uh that was an heartbreak. That was awful. Uh and then probably the the most jubilant win was the first one at Russell. We beat uh we beat Deschler forty to thirty four in double overtime. Uh and old paper, they were 21 to 28 points better than us. They ended up going to the finals that year. We had some mean players, did We had a tailback that could roll. Zay Boyd was, uh, was a special player. Lucas McNutt was our quarterback. And uh, we were we were okay on defense, but we were pretty doggone softy on offense. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go get one. Well, fortunately for us, uh, we strip is continuing to be red hot. Right, so we're going to have some of those good wins at Cato High School. Yeah, I, you know, and I think we've said this multiple times. Our best days are ahead of us. And, you know, I, I know people want to win right now. And I promise you, there ain't nobody who wants to win more than I do. Uh, you know, and these coaches and these kids. But, you know, building building something special takes time. You know, this thing didn't get broke in a, a year. It's not going to get fixed in two games. And, and people that think that you hire a new coach and all of a sudden you just win, they have never dealt with high school kids. Uh, you know, Winning is a mentality, just like losing is a mentality. And, you know, we, we've got to learn how we do everything. And, you know, that's good and bad. It, it's bad for the present because we're relying and we're trying to teach a bunch of guys how to win that may not know how to win. And then it's good because, you know, we've got 90% of our team that are freshmen and sophomores. You look at our seventh grade, they went out and hammered Hartsley, 32 to nothing, I believe. Look at the eighth grade. We missed a, a big opportunity to beat them in eighth grade. Got beat 14 to eight. But the best days for Decatur High School are, are ahead of them, and, and I truly believe that. Well, one of, one of my biggest takeaways from what you said Friday night in our interviews is you guys take a responsibility that you're going to get get serious and then you've got a responsibility to turn this thing around with, from a coaching standpoint. You get in there for fear of the kids. And you're not just putting it on the kids. And, they're not showing up and they're not doing their job. I mean, they're it's it's a two-way street. So I mean, I know y'all are committed and that defended to it, and and I appreciate that. And we well, get go ahead. But and, there, and there's a difference. And the thing that I'm trying to teach our kids is there's a difference between doing a job and doing a job to a high standard. You know, and that's one thing that we preach. Everything that we do, whether it's packing a bag, you go and look at the upgrades in the field house. You know, the the helmet shoulder pad racks. We've changed the way they store their stuff. So it's it, the high standard it applies to practice. It applies to that weight room. It applies to how we put up our shoulder pads of helmets, how we lift weights, how we prepare for a, a test in English. You know, and that's the hard part. You know, you don't, you don't change a culture overnight. You know, whether it's a good culture or a bad short culture, nothing changes just like that. There's got to be a lot of buy-in from the kids the community, the parents, you know, and there's also got to be a little patience and a little trust. You know, this isn't my first rodeo. We go 0-10 at West Morgan uh, in 2015. We finished two years later, 10-2, and beating Calvert County at Calvert County, winning a region championship. You know, we go to Russellville and we win 59 games in six years, uh, four region titles. We didn't lose a region game over four years. We're going to do those same things here. You know, do I want it to be this year? Absolutely. Because Friday nights are so much funner when you win. But, you know, here again, that culture and that understanding of what it takes to be successful doesn't change just like that. And it, it's going to change. And, and when it does, that's when you get the most reward rewardment from, from this job and from y'all's job of being a part of, of what we're doing. Well, hey, good luck. Let's go get them in Jasper. Get the first. Uh, let's go 1-0 and in the region. And you know what? It's always great. It's always a great day to be, be a Red Raider. Thank you, Thank you. That's it. <laughs>